You got that Carolina squat. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to an episode of Dirt Nation Off-Road. So today, we're gonna be bringing you another episode of Working on Winters, and today is the day we finally make the big upgrade that we've been waiting for for a long time, and that's the SAS. Now, let me explain what the SAS is briefly. SAS is a straight axle swap, so it gives you a front solid axle, which, as everybody knows, at least when you off-road, it's a much better setup for off-roading in terms of articulation and strength and durability and alignment and not screwing up everything else. The straight axle swap is just better in most areas. Independent front suspension or IFS, so you're gonna hear say SAS and IFS, We're gonna re that's referring to the two different setups on suspension. They both have their benefits and their drawbacks. We can all argue in the comments below, go ahead. In terms of Toyota pickups and 4Runners from 86 to 95, they all came with an IFS setup. And a, you know, a very common thing for those of us that have those trucks to do is a straight axle swap. So what we're gonna be doing is getting started with that today. Now you will see a giant pile of junk that I have sitting here. So you can see my straight axle chilling right here. This is all the knuckle and hub and bearings and brakes and everything sitting right here. I got a bunch of other stuff right there. And then I have these boxes all chilling right here. That stuff is actually the Trail Gear IFS Eliminator Kit. It's pretty much what you need for a straight axle swap on a vehicle for this year. Now we'll get a little bit more into that as we start to you know, actually do the swap. I'm gonna be by myself today and what I'm gonna be doing is pretty much tearing apart this entire front end. So you can see underneath, there's our IFS system. So, I mean, this is generally weaker when it comes to off-road, especially when you lock it. Because the whole reason that I'm actually swapping it right now, you know, I already had these parts and I had planned to just wheel the truck as is until I break it. Well, I broke it. So I snapped an axle on this side. Uh, I snapped it inside the hub. So due to that, I'm just gonna get this SAS taken care of. So what I'll be doing today, taking all this stuff off, all of it. This has to come off too. This front hitch system has to come off. And then I got to drill some holes in the frame. And then I got to cut off this front cross member that goes on the bottom. And I got to pull out the front diff. So we have a lot of work to do today. And then starting tomorrow, as well as throughout the week, I got somebody coming over, somebody, a familiar face, coming over to help it with uh, welding on the leaf springs and getting the straight axle all set up. So the goal is to get this done within a week. Um, generally, if you know what you're doing and you have all the parts, you can get this done in two to three days, maybe even on a weekend. But it is a big job and it is a lot of work. So watch the video, see if it's something for you, and then we'll go for there. I'm really excited to start getting this done. So we're gonna get started, we're gonna get to it. Let's get it. That's what it looks like one side mostly taken apart so that took about maybe about an hour and 15 minutes that wasn't too bad um none of the bolts really seized up torsion bars they came off no problem this shock that's all stripped so I'm, I'm cutting all this off anyways so what you have to do is you have to cut off this mount this mount you have to cut off the cross member you have to cut off this thing holding the brake line and then smooth all that out and then um we're gonna continue. So what I'll do next is uh, I'm gonna take off the front drive shaft and then I'm gonna take off, uh, start taking off bolts right here. Uh, we'll do the diff last. I'm actually gonna have uh, probably George V. Wrenching come over and help me uh, take off that. And then I'm gonna take off the stuff for the front cross member. And then we're barely dipping in, but we're committed now because I broke a brake line. I already broke a couple things. So we're not going back to IFS. This is, we're going full shits now. So. Let us continue. Side two is mostly disassembled. Got all the extra shit right here. Hit me up if you need anything. Hubs are hubs are accounted for already. Mr. B Wrenching is here. It's cracking my dude. What's happening? He's here to join the party. Start dropping it. Let's see what happens. Let's see. There's a There we go. Here we go. Yeesh. 
All right, well, here it is. Point of no return. Cheers. Cheers to the IFS system because we're getting rid of it right now. By the way, $15 grinder from Harbor Freight. We're gonna see if it if it does work. <laughs> see separation here fuck yeah all right let's do some i'll be an things. apprentice today i'll smack it against the oil pan mm. <laughs> actually i did oh shit look <laughs> no way. fuck i did son of a gun as long as it doesn't leak I think it's fine. <laughs> Oops. There it is. No longer an IFS truck. No going back now. <laughs> For well, those of you guys that uh, are going to be doing the SAS, just so you know, one cutoff wheel is not enough. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, luckily, we got we got a ten pack, so we're good to go. All right, this is what one side's going to look like. Um, I'm gonna sand down the welds. Luckily, I did not hit the frame too much, so not too bad at all. So we're gonna do some smoothing out. Um, you do cut a little bit on the the engine mount or the motor mount, but there is a gusset that you you weld onto there. But looking good so far. George is cutting off the rest of the other side right there. About to start. Oh, uh, PPE. <laughs> Make sure you wear PPE. Sheesh. George is gonna give us some potassos. See what happens. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey. <laughs> It'll come off, give that fucker a twist. There you go, throw it, throw it. Ah, mierda. All right, got this side knocked out. Not perfect, but it'll do. So uh, welds are actually gonna go for the shock hoop around here and here. So that's why I had to make sure these were actually flat. Now, when I cut off the mount, I did get into the into the frame just a little bit, but not too bad. So like these fat welds right here, that's fine. I'm gonna paint over all this later. Um, I might need to even out this a little bit, but I'm gonna take a look at the kit and see what I have first before we do that. But that's good to go. So next big piece is going to be you have to drill into the frame on both sides in order to get uh, the leaf spring hanger in the back here. So um, I purchased one of these. I'm going to see if this works with my cheap Milwaukee drill, but I don't know. We'll see if it works. Wish me luck. Got one hole drilled all the way through, and then we used a, a pilot to get the next hole started. 
we're going to drill all the way through both sides of the frame because this is a boxed frame so it has two sides they have to drill through so it takes a minute uh i recommend getting a a corded drill so that you can have some pretty good power and it doesn't die right away but we got to do this here and do it on the other side all right getting close to getting done um honestly if you guys do this job the teardown process the probably the longest and most time consuming part is going to be drilling these two holes so you watch out for a second george so the problem is when you drill through the first section okay cool but then there's this little like channel there's another like gusset on the inside of the frame that you have to like drill through and you have to like play with it and drill again to do that in order to get the pilot through well you got the pilot through there but in order to cut through to the other side you have to take care of that little uh piece of metal in there so that's probably the most time consuming part of what we're doing right now but we're almost done with it we already finished the other side i'll show that to you guys but you can see right there through and through hole so that's solid ready to go but we'll show you what that's for tomorrow but we're getting all wrapped up here almost done here all right side two was an mfer but that's also done you can see cut through and through so we put the barrel on there so that means we are all done for today because me and george are pooped we're gonna go get some donuts yes and then uh to tune in tomorrow when we start to weld all this back together we got pinchy ray coming tomorrow he's gonna be uh taking care of all the fabrication well sorry the easy fabrication <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's gonna be taking care of the welding and then uh we'll see we'll see it's gonna take a couple days because the axle's not uh together so we have to build the axle and everything still but it's all right tune in tomorrow we'll be good Let's get hello in. and good morning today we're gonna be starting on the axle we're gonna get it installed today probably not gonna finish up the truck entirely because we're still waiting on some parts but before ray gets here to get started with the welding i wanted to show you guys the trail gear kit what it comes with and what i got it from and all that good stuff so let's get into that real quick so here's my axle this is a 1985 axle um big shout out to my man manson on instagram he actually sold this to me so he gave me a good price on it, it comes with lockers uh air locker and a 529 so we're gonna have to re-gear either the front or the rear I haven't figured out what i'm gonna do yet with that but got the axle and then i have a bunch of stuff over there i have extra leaf springs extra shackles and brake parts and hubs and stuff like that um i also have the ifs hubs and the brakes so depending on how it goes i'm going to try and use the ifs brakes because the v6 brakes are a little bigger um same with the hubs the hubs spread out the axle a little bit more but uh there is a little bit of fab work that you have to do with that so we're not sure what we're gonna do with that yet but stay tuned for that now for the kit itself this is the trail gear ifs eliminator kit the one that i got is with the leaf springs it's a three inch heavy duty spring rate so that's for if you have a v8 or a v6 or a bigger motor and you're gonna have a, bu a bumper a winch and all that stuff you want to get the heavy duty springs because you, you can offer it at like one two and three inches and then you can go like regular or heavy duty so there's a lot of options with it now i got this from four wheel parts now somebody i got to do a shout out for is robert with customer service from four wheel parts this dude did a hell of a job of making sure that i got exactly what i wanted he also went out of his way to contact trail gear to make sure they can drop ship it to me make sure they have it in stock that way i'm not ordering something and then i gotta wait four or five months for it this dude went out of his way to make sure all that stuff went smoothly for me because I ordered this stuff on like a Thursday. I got it the next Tuesday, which is incredible. A big shout out to Robert. I know you're watching. Hope you enjoy the beast once it's ready to go. But let's take a look at the kit real quick and see what we have here. So first up, you have your two leaf springs. So like I said, three inch heavy duty leaf springs. You have your cross member, which will go to the front you weld it on the front for your leaf springs and then we have a set of shocks right here i think these are either 12 or 14 inch bilsteins we'll measure them once we get them out the box it also going to come with a new set of brake rotors which is really nice so i'm going to make sure that those work with the ifs v6 brakes and then i have a set of my own uh brake pads that i was going to replace anyways then we have a set of u-bolts all around so that's just to connect the axle to the leaf springs you have a steering stabilizer this is some heavy duty shackles so those will get assembled pretty soon then we have our steering stabilizer or sorry then we have our steering so longer one will go across the middle and then this will hook up to your steering box i think it's called the pitman arm or the idler arm no pitman arm 
So that's your pitman arm right there. And then uh, this is for what goes on the top of the knuckle. You have shock hoops, extended brake lines. Comes with a set of spacers, but I also have spacers that I was using on the truck. But then again, if you use the IFS hubs and you fabricate them in order to work, you won't need spacers. So there's quite a few things to work out there. I have a lot of extra parts. Then we have these screen bushings and all that good stuff. Some more hardware. And then this right here is a knuckle rebuild kit. So this comes with, yeah, it's a wheel bearing kit. So it comes with inner and outer bearings. And then you have bearings for the knuckles, which are right over here. So I, I'm going to use the stock knuckles. Now, they do recommend going to like a six shooter knuckle, which is like the better setup. But I'm going to be using the stock ones for now until we get uh, some more cash to get the upgraded ones. So as of right now, I have everything to complete this swap, get it driving, and have a fresh rebuilt front end. Now, in order to go off-roading, we're going to have to figure out the drive shaft. So once it's all mounted up, we have to measure the drive shaft to see is it too short, is it too long, what kind of adjustments do we have to have made, and then the other thing is the re-gear. Right now, the truck is a 488. Um, I do have a set of gears inside this diff that maybe I could pull out and put onto the third member that's chilling over there. Or I could buy a new set of 529s and put them in the rear, but then I'd have to crack open the rear again. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that. We'll figure that out soon enough. But there's all the goodies. Complete kit to get this swap done. All you really need is the axle and a couple things from the axle. And you can get this done fairly easy. We'll find out how easy right now. So Ray's going to be showing up soon enough. We're going to get started. Hey, welcome Ray back to the channel. He's here. Uh... Finish uh, fucking this truck up real quick. So we're gonna get started with this this front cross member, clean it off a little bit, and then we're gonna clamp it and tack it and do all that shit. But you guys will see. All fun stuff today. All right, so it's really loud, but what I'm doing right now is I'm getting the axle ready. So I'm taking off, you know, parts of the axle, cleaning up the knuckles and stuff. And Ray's working on tack welding all the stuff for the leaf screen. right there and there. Get that in place already. Got the NECs on there, polyurethane bushings inside the sleeves. They're just tack welded for now. Same with the front. Um, we're gonna measure up the leaf strings, make sure they're straight before we do any final welding. But for now, we're hooking up the hangers, or sorry, the shackles. So right now we're just measuring, but we're gonna throw the axle underneath, get it all mocked up, make sure it's solid. So at this point, what Ray's working on doing is just everything that he's tacked up, he's now welding to its final spot. Um, we checked the leaf rings and the axle when we uh, mocked it up, made sure it's all straight enough. So it's doing pretty good, but he's gonna finish welding right here. And then I think this side he's done. So obviously we're gonna get all this painted up and everything and then throw the axle on and then we'll see how much more we can get done today. But We'll definitely have to continue throughout the week, so it should be fun. So right now we're working on the axle reinforcement. There's a front skid plate, and then uh, that's it.
came out fucking mint, son. Hell yeah. Hey, let's go. All right, so, oh yeah, George B. Wrenchin showed up. I want to say hi to George B. Wrenchin. And uh, Ray's still here. I'm still here. Surprising me. Um, that's all done. It's welded. We uh, painted it. And now we got to start working on the axle. So you guys saw we welded on the, the what is this called? The truss. And then the diff armor. So that's good to go. We're still going to have to paint it. But I'm going to start putting the knuckle on because I feel like it. Um, so I started with doing this shit and then pretty much i'm watching a video to do this because i don't know how to do it so i'm just gonna link that video below um so you guys can check it out because low range off-road did their own video on it and it's pretty good i'm not gonna straight up steal their words from them so just watch the video below and then that's what i'm gonna be doing right now all right did a little assembly on the axle and we started to mock it up back together we put the steering on so the ball joints are marked in a specific way and they have specific threads you can't screw it up um it's actually pretty simple to do so the only thing trail gear maybe i was missing the hardware but i didn't get hardware for the shock so that's something i have to go pick up so right now it's mocked up the screwdrivers i just wanted to see it how it looks together and it's looking delicious um we're waiting for kromali burfields which is why i can't do uh i can't finish up the axles so but i did do the steering knuckle for now so top and bottom is done there and then the back part the seals are done so we still have to do the re-gear and then we still have to do get the chromoly sh shafts and then we'll do the snout and then the brakes and everything but it is looking juicy tune in tomorrow we'll be back let's get it all right here we are day three of the sass hoping to get somewhere um you saw how we left off yesterday george, george is already at work because george is a working man that's what's up but you saw we already got everything all mocked up um welding is 99 done there's a couple other things you have to get touched up but uh we put the knuckles on last night and we put the steering on last night so what we're going to work on right now george is already working on the idler arm so we can connect the steering so we'll actually have steering and then um everybody welcome austin back to the channel Whoa. we see austin on uh on uh winter's videos randomly look at that george took it off like nothing done. we got that from uh o'reilly's when ran to that but i'm working on uh cleaning up some stuff best cleaner ever gasoline it's actually cheaper than degreaser um i'm cleaning up the studs because they we got new brakes new brake rotors um don't reuse your studs but i'm reusing my studs so i clean these up with gas inside here and does a pretty good job of cleaning it up and then i'm going to clean up the hubs so that we can put new bearings and then i have to clean these up as well these are the we call this the snout um you're supposed to replace this bushing as well but you're not going to do it so we're just getting a lot of shit cleaned up you can see all the hub parts we've already cleaned them up and then we're hoping to get this thing on all four wheels by tonight will we who knows but we're going to try we'll see how it goes So you guys saw me clean up the diff uh george is going to throw the third member in um you can see there it's got an air locker which is really cool 529 gears so that's cool uh which means we'll probably regear the rear or we'll regear the front again and pull it out either way i'm gonna have to do work either way so right now i just want the truck on all four wheels so we're gonna continue um check out our snapped axle this is our ifs axle that we accidentally accidentally snapped anyways uh what i'm gonna start working on right now is i'm gonna put the hub back together um i got some new brake rotors over there got our hubs austin clean those up before taking off so we're gonna get those taken care of and then i want to show you guys here you can see the importance of keeping your stuff organized um i kept pretty much everything organized now i had it all in one bucket soaking with some gasoline so that it all cleaned up really well but you can see i have all the washers right here i have the cone washers all this stuff for the hub this is all for the snout and then i have lock washers and everything and then i have the studs so pretty important to keep everything organized so that when you go to put everything back together you don't run into any issues so we're going to continue it's all doing good so far coming back together and put on our new brake just line that up got that and then i'm going to put a washer or a lock washer and a nut now i anti-seize the hub but i'm going to put 
a little bit of Loctite on the threads that hold the caliper and that together. Okay, I'm just gonna put that loosely into place. And then we're gonna start hammering in the studs again. We got all those in. Now, next we'll be using probably the most useful tool that you can get for this job, and that's a punch set. First time I ever got these was, was just for this job, and they have been a big help. So you're just gonna take the punch, hit it on the top of the stud, and just uh, make shit fall like that. So yeah, we'll just do it on the Tacoma bed, it'll be fine. We're gonna move to the ground, but I'm gonna punch all these into place. You guys get the point. All right, um, making macaroni noises with our Burfield joint. Now, um, I said earlier in the video that we we're gonna go chromoly shafts. Well, the chromoly shafts are taking longer than I expected. Actually, they might be here this week, but I'm in a hurry. Uh, I wanna get this done by, by the meat that we have coming up. So because of that, I'm gonna put on the stock ones, which is fine because these look pretty beefy as it is. And then we'll just, we'll make sure to wreck these. And then we'll grease the, we'll put the new ones on. So I'm just greasing these right now. This is not the way you're supposed to grease them. You're supposed to take the axle shaft out and grease all the way down there. But I mean, for what I'm gonna be doing, this will be just fine. We're gonna rebuild it anyway. So I'm just gonna get grease as packed down there as, as, as I can. And then you just stick that shaft inside. Burfields are in. So with these, you have to just put them in a certain way. There's a flat spot. The flat spot has to be on the top and the bottom when you slide them in. So that's good right there. We checked it. It's turning on both sides. So it is connected. Making some pretty good progress. So we now have the snout on. We put the axles in like we showed you. And then we assembled the outer part of the spindle. All right, we are jumping right back into it. It's been a couple days since you last saw us, but we left off in the same place, but there's been some new developments. Now, since it's been a couple days, our uh, axle shafts actually came in. So these are Kamali shafts from Trail Gear. I think these are long gear shafts or whatever, but full Kamali, they come pre-greased. You just have to assemble them, which is pretty, pretty nice. So they come greased like you can see right there. So, the only problem with that is, since I already put axle shafts in, I'm gonna have to pull those out. So, um, gonna have to backtrack just a little bit, but that's just fine. You know, it's better to have the parts now and get it taken care of. But I'm gonna start with something. We're gonna do a couple things. Um, now, I forgot if I mentioned, but we were able to fit the V6 brakes on this setup. So that is actually the bigger brake system because these are the straight axle brakes and they're a lot smaller and they're older. And I was able to fit the V6 brakes, which is really cool. So um, like I said, we're just gonna get right back into it and get this thing assembled because we gotta get it done by tomorrow night, at least being able to be drivable. Um, we'll have to take care of some other things later, but we're gonna dive into it, let's get it. Okay, so. This took me a minute to figure out and I had to make some phone calls. Uh, shout out to Jaime. Um, he answered and was the savior. So these um, Longfield Burfield Cromali shafts, you gotta put a snap ring on the inside of these splines. And that's the part that goes into, where the hell is the Burfield? So that's what goes inside to here because that'll lock it into place. Um, it comes pre-greased and everything, so that's cool. But um, you do have to make sure to put the snap ring on because I went and put the snap, I put it in without the snap ring. And then I read, did a little bit of research, found out I screwed up. So I had to pull it out again, which was a bitch in itself. Um, I already got the other side with the C-clip on, so that's good to go. So I'm just gonna stretch this a little bit and get it on there. Just like that. So it'll go in just like that. And then we'll go ahead and go tap this so that it's into place. I'm putting it on cardboard right here. So once again, nothing gets damaged. I'm just gonna tap the top until it goes seats into place. There you go. One good smack on the floor. Like I said, I did use cardboard so that I'm not damaging anything. But now you can see it's all the way in the splines. Actually, no, that didn't work. Of course it didn't. Hold that thought. <sighs> okay, that was stressful. To be honest with you guys, that was pretty fucking stressful. So, these Burfields, 
they're pretty interesting because like I said, you have to have a snap ring on the inside of these and they are pretty brittle. I mean, once you get them seated into place, they work great in keeping this all together to where it doesn't really, it's not gonna slip out or anything, but I broke two of them. So I ended up getting them and removing them from the old axles and I broke two of them trying to get it into here, but now I got it seated into place with a little bit of patience and some good luck. So now we can start to assemble the axles now. Um, these are all done. So you'll also need a, uh, another snap ring on the end right here. I'm gonna worry about that in a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about it right now, but let's go. Got a, not much daylight left. So we're gonna get this finished up. Molly shafts are in and you have to play with them quite a bit to make sure that they're spinning freely inside the dip. But that one is now good. Okay, getting close to wrapping up one side. Brakes are good. Extended brake line is good. All this stuff, I'll go through it again, make sure it's tight, but it's all tight. New brake pads, got the V6 brake caliper, brand new rotor that came with the kit, hub, all that stuff's good. The bearings are all tight and, ex and assembled in there. So well, I can't spin it right now, I put the thing, but <clears throat> that's all good to go. So next we're gonna put a little bit of anti-seize on the hub just to make sure that when the time comes that we gotta take off this spacer, it doesn't give us too much trouble. So this kit did come with some hubs. I don't know if these are specifically designed for this application. Um, looks the same size though, let's see. Same size. Okay, so we're gonna try these. Throw some anti-seize afterwards if it works. You know what, I think those are gonna be better because those fit right on there. So a problem that I'm running into, if you guys haven't noticed, my old spacers don't fit. Although my old spacers are hub centric, which will be better. In addition to that, the new lug nuts are 21s, but the 21 socket doesn't fucking fit in there. So I'm using the old lug nuts to keep this thing together because it's a 19 and the 19 impact will fit in that hole. So I'm really having to go out of my way to do some pretty, pretty Mickey Mouse stuff here, but it is working. And that's what matters. Um, I have to make sure to torque all those down pretty good. So I'll make sure to do that right now. So this, I'm gonna just make sure that we have a little bit of lithium grease on uh, all this right here. You wanna keep all these metal parts lubricated. So put it on the inside of the splines on the hub. So you're gonna make sure the holes line up and then I'm just gonna make sure it bolts up first. <clears throat> so it'll go on like that. We'll continue tomorrow. We're gonna do this on the other side, probably get some help. And then I gotta, I gotta get what I need for right here so I can put the snap ring on correctly. And then we're getting close, I'm getting so close. Okay, in normal Dustin fashion, I couldn't help myself. So I actually, you can see I slipped, I slipped the snap ring on there. There it is, slipped into place. So we actually just <laughs> finished the installation. Just to finish up our locking hub, make sure it's in the free position. And then there's this little clutch thing that, you know, like I said, the low range video that I'm gonna link below, you guys can check that out. Um, so you know exactly how to take care of this. Okay, next day, we're back at it. Um, gonna start assembling everything on this side. Finished up last night. Um, the only thing we gotta take care of is the locking hubs. So right now it's just on there, it's not gonna lock up, but that's fine, we have to do a drive shaft. Anyways, we just need the truck rolling today. So I'm gonna continue with assembling all this stuff. All right, that's all she wrote. Um, took off the front drive shaft that connects to the transfer case. This side's all wrapped up, the other side's all wrapped up. We got the locking hubs to work, surprisingly because I really have a hard time with those. Brakes are bled. Um, we have to fill up the differential with some oil. And then at that point, it's just put the wheels on and try to figure out how to get it out of the garage. And then I also got to get hardware for the shocks, but that I can do, that'll be no problem. But we're gonna get started. We're gonna put some diff oil in and then we're gonna put the wheels on. All right, we're gonna start jacking up the truck so we can try and put a wheel on. And then I have Winter's old stock wheel, has no air in it. This one has no air either, but this is the smallest I have. 
<laughs> Dude, you don't have the other ones? No, this is the spare that was underneath Witcher's. Oh, shit. I pulled this out of Witcher's when I freaking started working on it. But it's gonna fit. Heck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. It's so disgusting like that. <laughs> Sick ass. Hell yeah. <laughs> Sick ass cholo lean. It's going like this way. It's like this. And then. Uh -huh. <laughs> Elbows up. Elbows up. <laughs> That's a big bitch. Damn. You got that Carolina squat going on. Yeah, sick ass squat. <laughs> That's fucking huge. A few inches later. Okay, um, off camera, we threw on some two inch blocks in the rear with some longer shocks. So now we have 10 inch shocks in the rear and this is what it is. <laughs> Jesus, this thing is tall. Um, before it's drivable, I gotta get some uh, hardware for the shocks. But other than that, it is done for now. It is so freaking tall. Honestly, I feel like it might be able to clear 40s, not just 37s, because it is huge. Honestly, like, disturbingly huge. Um, but we'll figure it out. Tune in later. Let's get it. All right, real quick. Uh, we got our diff back from Flatline Customs. So we did a re-gear on it. Now we're at 529 gears. And then we're going to start working on throwing that back in. And then after that, we got to work on the front drive shaft as well as uh, air compressor for the front locker. So we'll throw this in real quick and then we'll go from there. All right. Change of scenery. We're at Flacco's house right now. We're going to be working on the, the square tube drive shaft. Um, that's one of the last pieces. Now, off camera, a couple things that I've been working on. Uh, rear brakes, I had to replace all the rear brakes just because when I was doing the axle or when I was doing the differential, um, I ended up messing up one of the brake lines. And then when I was trying to fix that brake line, I stripped the little the T like thing that splits the, the brake lines on the rear axle. So I got all that stuff replaced. Um, I'll show you guys a photo, kind of what I did, but went to the same place, G&J Air, Aircraft Supply. They always handle everything pretty good, but I don't say hi to the flaquito. Look at the stash. It, it, it's not fake. It's, it's not, it's definitely not fake. Pull on it. <laughs> pull it, pull it, pull it. Oh. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to get started. So there's a, a pretty cool write-up on Marlin Crawler. Um, that was sent to me uh, by my homie Donald. Um, he's got a, a sassed uh, forerunner. So he's uh, he sent us the write-up on that. So we're going to be doing that for the square tube drive shaft. Now, something to note, square tube drive shaft, it's not ideal when it comes to 
you know, driving in four wheel drive at a higher speed. It's not gonna be very balanced, but from what I understand, it's not something that's gonna vibrate when you drive normally or, or anything like that. Or if you're doing low speed crawling in four wheel drive, you're not gonna have much of a problem, but just keep that in mind. But this is a cheap way to get a drive shaft when you do your SAS, so we'll get started. Let's see if it fits. If it fits, it ships. Hey, oh. how much play is there? Poquito. Poquito. Yeah, it's not bad. So pretty much this is like a, a hitch style piece of steel. This is a two and a quarter, and then it goes into a two and a half piece, which goes on the, the bigger side of the drive shaft. So like I said, there's a full write up on my Marlin Crawler. We'll link it below. And that thing is hot. Flaming hot. Flaming hot. Flaming hot. We don't have gas welder, so. You gotta clean this shit up by hand. Which is okay. Still does the same If it works, up. it works. That's what matters. So a quick note, Flacco's cracking up because I'm over here touching shit that's way too hot. <laughs> way too hot. I'm all getting the ay ay ay. Yeah. Anyways, so what you do is uh for the for the second piece, you take the piece you already made and you line it up so he just grinded down the weld that was on there and then you take it and you mark it and that's right there that's where we have to cut it so that this will be that size and then you can take your where's the other that's piece it. at you can take this big piece and then that'll slide over that perfectly and that's where you weld it all right so that's how that looks don't touch it though yeah don't touch it with your this is hands. 3d it's 3d heat we're giving you we're giving you the virtual heat right now and then look at it. it should slide about on there a little bit a little bit a yeah. little bit less, less probably have to grind it down right here but that's virtually how you want it to look so that it can slide on there and then you can just well that, that, that is uh, welding yeah yes and then it should be ready to bolt on hit it flaco move <laughs> Jeez. that's too long yeah we have to shorten it all right um had a little bit of a fail with our drive shaft um the drive shaft itself so here it is right here we ended up having uh both both ends are welded they're solid i mean the drive shaft as it was supposed to be made is 100 percent complete and it's good to go now the only problem is um, because of this this U joint setup right here, um, this has pretty limited flex, especially for what we're looking for. Because you can even see how much more this flexes down. So the problem that we ran into is when I went to put on the drive shaft, it wouldn't come down far enough to link up with the front yoke on the the third member. So because of that, pretty much put that project dead in the water as it was sitting at that that night. So. Um, what I determined that I'm going to try and do, because there's a little bit of trouble fixing that I got to do now, is um, I'm going to take out two Leafs from the Leaf Pack because um, I've been looking at some other Toyotas. Uh, we went to like the Yoda Trader meet last night that was in uh, Anaheim. I was looking at some of the solid axle swap trucks and a lot of them either have four or three Leafs in their Leaf Pack. Now, the one that I have is a three inch heavy duty and it has six Leafs. And I think it, the truck is just way too tall. I mean, we already determined that it's really tall, but I think it's way too tall for this drive shaft setup. Now, what I could do is get another end like this and it'd be plenty flexy. Um, now, the only problem with that is I still feel like the truck is just too tall. So we're gonna go ahead and take out two leaves in the front and see if that helps with the drive shaft angle. And then at that point, we're gonna have four wheel drive. And then we also got our three inch spacers coming in and we're gonna throw those on. Um, I'll show you guys the three inch spacers and we'll talk about that a little bit when we put them on, but I'm gonna get started with jacking up the truck and tearing everything apart so that we can take out some leaf springs and then continue from there. So, so I got everything torn apart both sides. The axle is dropped right now. What I'm working on doing is, you can see I already took out the bottom part of the leaf right there. I'm gonna be removing two leaves from this pack um based off you know i had a conversation with a couple people they said if it's a six leaf pack do number two and number four starting from the top so i'm going to remove number two and number four as a test and then we'll kind of go from there i mean if 
if things you know end up too soft or it, it doesn't ride good or it lowers it too much then I'll, I'll come back and adjust the good thing is this isn't a, a a set thing you can always adjust it afterwards so this is going to be trial and error from now on but um gonna end up removing this one and this one which means i gotta just slit this bracket right here and right here uh because that's holding those in place and then they'll just slide out and then i'll bolt the leaf pack back together and then hopefully that'll make it a little bit lower and to where the drive shaft can line up so let's get cutting two brackets cut off you saw the leaf packs already kind of coming apart so let's set this down real quick change it up a little bit i pulled the very bottom one and then i pulled this big one because the reason i didn't pull the second one is because the second one wraps around right here and right here so it looks like it's structurally structurally important to the rest of the pack got it all back together at least for the leaf springs uh new center bolt and a nut now this nut is a 17 it was a little too big so i shaved it a little bit just so that the spring perch will fit on there i already did it to both sides so from this point i'm just going to bolt it all back together and then next if the drive shaft is going to link up we'll we'll cut to that and then we'll see what else we have to take care of before we can end this video but getting close there it is trucks back on all fours uh two leaves removed it's still high as shit, but i really think these springs need to settle so i'm gonna just drive around a little bit um drive shaft still doesn't line up it's very very close so i think we're gonna get there soon but we'll continue another day. Um, for now, I'm just gonna go drive it around, make sure it's all good, that I put it back together right, and then try and break in these springs a little bit, go hit some speed bumps and stuff, and then we'll go from there, but it's looking good. Let's get it. Now, last you guys saw, we were working on the drive shaft. I was trying to make my own thing here with uh, converting the dual carton to a sing uh, single, it just wasn't gonna work. I shaved it down as much as I could to do clearance and everything like that. It was just not gonna work. So I enlisted the help of some professionals. So I ended up taking my dry shaft out to Galindo Off-Road, which is over in Baldwin Park. They were highly recommended to me from a few different people that don't know each other. So I know a lot of people go to him. So Jonathan actually dropped it off last week and he was willing to work with me. Normally they won't work with square drive shafts, but he was willing to work with me on this, which is a big shout out to him. So um, we'll definitely link them below, but here's our drive shaft right here. So this is the same, this is the third member side. And then over here is where he did his work. So Toyota parts, from what he said is pretty hard to find right now so he ended up working with something that he could find so this is actually not a stock toyota you know u-joint setup now what's okay with about that is that this is much beefier of a u-joint so it's a lot bigger a lot beefier so you can see the difference between the two right there but what he did that was different was he put an adapter on it so that it'll match up with my transfer case which is exactly what i need and more importantly you can see all that flex this has the right amount of flex that we're gonna need to get this thing going. So now we're gonna bolt on this drive shaft and then go test four by four. And then we'll go from there, um, see what else we have to work out before we wrap up the video, but let's get this bolted on and we'll go from there. Uh. All right, welcome back to the misery. <laughs> it has been a stressful last couple days. The drive shaft remains to be an issue. <clears throat> but I think we have it taken care of. So at this point, I don't know how much I recorded. I know I recorded some stuff, some stuff I didn't. Um, I was just trying so many different things that couldn't really catch all of it and I didn't know what was gonna work, but here we are right now. We tried making a square tube drive shaft by ourselves. Dual carton joint, didn't flex enough. So then I tried converting it to a single carton. That didn't work either. Then I ended up taking it to a drive shaft shop, took it to Galindo Off-Road, um, he ended up making an end of just like a, a standard Dana end that fits on some Toyotas, but not mine because once again, the chain driven transfer case is a problem. If you're doing the swap on a V6 automatic or manual with a chain driven transfer case, you're going to run into the same issues as me because it's different. The yoke, the flange ends, these right here, those are different on the V6 and they're really, really hard to find. The splines are different and the flange is different so that created a whole host of problems so he ended up making an end with the standard you know dana end and used it with this converter or this adapter right here which this ends up matching with mine problem was that still didn't have enough flex at that point i ended up putting a instagram post out there 
asking for help because I was all out of ideas. In addition, I also tried axle shims, which I'll show you the axle shims right now. Um, not recommended for Toyota axles because it throws off your camber and it throws off steering, but I figured why not try? I've seen other people do it and it worked. I tried that drive shaft still didn't match up. It would bolt up, but it wouldn't turn all the way. It would bind. After putting an Instagram post out there, I had a lot of people reach out and a lot of people said to reach out to Yoda Masters, which I already knew about Yoda Masters. I just had really never dealt with them. They're out in Corona. So I went and saw them today and they ended up needing exactly what I needed. So these ends right here. So this is a, the dual carton end that I tried converting. You can see it just does not have that much flex. And we already, you know, reviewed that. This is the other end that goes into my third member. And you can see how much flex this sucker has. Quite a bit of flex, a good amount. So I ended up going to Yoda Masters and I got this end right here from them. I also got a new U-joint because they carry that in stock. So they go to junkyards or if they have extra vehicles or anything like that, they chop these off and then they sell them to you. So I was able to buy this, which this is a standard 4Runner Tacoma first gen one and it worked with the adapter that I had because they also didn't have the flange that fits on my end that comes in this extended you know high uh, high angle variety so I had to get that and then go get a new piece of square tubing which I now have to cut right about here and then now we have a drive shaft which brings us to over here which I already tore this all apart because I took out these suckers right here so I tried the axle shims to try and bring the pinion angle up a little bit. So you install those underneath. And then when you install them underneath, that'll shift the pinion angle a little bit. Now the problem with that is it ends up making this closer to your leaf spring so that when you have turning, you start to rub, you can risk the ball joints breaking or something like that. In addition, it also throws your caster off by giving you negative caster, which creates a problem with steering and alignment and everything like that. So that's where we're at right now. So with all the frustration and everything, I think we've come to a solution that's gonna work and we're gonna find out today, hopefully. So what I'm gonna get started with right now is I've already finished all this stuff. This is all bolted up, it's ready to go. I have some trimming to do on those center bolts, but whatever. I'm gonna chop this end right here and then we're gonna put our drive shaft together and we're gonna bolt this sucker up. And then if it spins freely, we're good to go. Now it's currently at full droop, so this will be the worst of it. Presumably. All right, moment of truth. This is full droop. Two are bolted up on each side. That's gonna vibrate. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Oh, this is so nice. <laughs> thank the lord thank the fucking loud all right well fucking transmission cooler transmission cooler still in the way but there it is the dry shaft is 100 percent bolted up torqued down and you can see spinning freely so i mean that might rattle while it drives but i'm not gonna have the lock the the hubs locked but, all right, let's put the wheels on. We'll go from there. Okay, so since we got our, our dry shaft already taken care of, the last piece to actually finish our SAS is the steering stabilizer. Cause it used to come down here. There was a bracket right there and then it'll connect to the low steer. But since we went to high steer, Toyota, or I mean, Trail Gear smartly put it up, up here so that it doesn't get bashed on rocks. Cause if you look at Jeeps and like old vehicles, they'll have them down here and they get smacked on rocks and then you'll ruin your stab stabilizer multiple times. So they have it relocated up here. So this is just two U-bolts going to this plate, which comes with a stud, a spacer. Then you put your steering stabilizer. And then from all your IFS stuff that you cut off and grinded and uh, you know, made sure that there was nothing left, unlike me, um, your steering stabilizer you're gonna have a piece that gets welded on right there and then from there you can hook it up and you're good to go so that's what we're gonna get taken care of right now all right so last couple pieces are welded on got the steering stabilizer haven't put it on yet because it is a little hot but that one's good and then they give you these these gussets for your leaf spring so that if you hit something hard you don't bend up so it's just kind of a reinforcement so got that taken care of on that side and that side, 
So I'll get the steering stabilizer, the stabilizer, the steering stabilizer bolted up, and then we're ready for a shakedown run. Let's get it. Hello and good morning. It is time. Finally shake down the sass. So currently driving out to Lido Creek. Well, we're already in Lido Creek, but we're heading to the trailhead. Um, we we're actually here a couple weeks ago. You guys saw on the YouTube video, but coming out here just to get the truck get into four low get some rocks underneath the tires kind of shake it down a little bit see is it solid enough to wrap up this video and then kind of see what we got to do from there so that we can start hitting some hard trails got to flexed out a little bit that front's looking pretty good the rear eh. now remember it is on blocks so it's not going to flex really good right there but doesn't look like it's binding Got a nice tuck going on. Fuck yeah. <laughs> it's basically like a teeter totter. Ooh, look at that. So there it is. Shakedown run is complete. Sass complete. I'm going to wrap up this video before something else pops up because it has been a hellish, probably, I'd say about a month of doing this Sass. But a couple things left to do on the truck um, in terms of just getting it ready for some hard lines. Uh, we need 37s, so we're going to get some 37s, whether that's new or used or whatever, we'll, we'll figure it out. I need some 37s. I need to wire up the front locker because that's one thing that I learned is that the front locker is gonna help me quite a bit. It was nice uh, wheeling it without the locker, kind of see what it can do with just the rear. I need to put on some new lights. I need to put on some rock lights and then uh, just a couple other things to clean up and, and do everything like that. Now, when it comes to the sass and everything like that, everything was solid. Um, I'm gonna go through and recheck and retorque all my bolts because we actually went through and flexed it out a little bit and we bounced it around and we did some stuff like that. So that's something that you guys got to make sure that you do is go through all your bolts, make sure everything's good. You know, if you got to grease something, make sure you regrease it. Just make sure everything is solid before you go on that next run. And you'll have to check it every couple runs just to be sure that everything's tight and solid. But for the suspension and the sass itself, I got to say it did very, very well. Articulation was good didn't bind up it didn't have any problems it didn't crank or clank or whatever like it was a hundred percent solid the truck did well and i'm pretty surprised about that considering i mostly put this on by myself i mean obviously people help me but it's not like assembling the knuckles and shit like that i did pretty much all that by myself and it held up pretty good i mean we'll see how it stands the test of time but for now it's good everything's good to go and you guys have already seen the sass 100 times throughout this video but this is the last time we'll take a look at it um 
I got some painting to do on those uh, gussets right there. And then I clear coated the axle. I didn't paint it because I kind of like how it looks like that. So I just clear coated it for now. We'll figure it out. It's hot right now. Nothing's gonna rust. So I'm not too worried about that. Now, in terms of an axle swap, I definitely learned a lot about this process. It is not an easy swap, but it's also not a hard swap. The Trail Gear Kit provides you with pretty much everything that you need, and there's detailed instructions along the way that'll help guide you to do this. So the steps and the process isn't hard, but the work is hard. And that's the biggest thing with this. I would say this was a lot less complicating than the engine swap, but it was way more work if that makes sense. George obviously came by, helped out quite a bit with it. Austin came by and then Pinchy Ray came by to do the welding and we got all that done. So one week to get an axle underneath is not bad at all. Now something to point out is the drive shaft. I learned some things about drive shafts because I went out of my way to try and do this cheap and it ended up burning me because the money that I spent on making a square tube drive shaft that I have right now that vibrates, I probably could have got a well-balanced solid drive shaft for the same price and it probably would have been less hassle. But you live, you learn, that's the things that happen sometimes. Just know in the future, if you guys are doing the same thing, watch this video. Don't, it's not an exact, hey, this is how you do it exactly. Learn from it, do the research, get out there, get on forums, see what people are doing because depending on your vehicle, you're gonna run into your own problems. And that's the thing that I learned the most. I've said it before, this is like the worst truck to build because it's the V6, because it's the automatic and the chain driven transfer case. It's like the worst to build and you run into a lot of problems because of it. But now I have a 5VZE 3.4 swapped SAST truck. It's pretty great. Gonna have to do a manual swap at some point so I can get the gear driven transfer case and I can get the doubler and then I gotta bop the bed and I got a couple other things that I gotta take care of on it. That's fine, but for now, it is doing good. For those of you guys out there getting your SASs done, the only thing that I can say with 100% certainty is do your research. Research, research, research. That's the only thing that helped me with getting this done within a, a week in terms of the axle part of it is because I did my research so I knew what I was doing. That way we can just get it knocked out. Do your research and then do your research with drive shaft stuff too because that's what took so long for me is because I didn't do my research on drive shaft stuff. I kind of just winged it and that burned me in the end to where this swap took way too long. So do your research, watch this video, watch other videos. There's other videos out there of people doing their straight axle swaps. Watch those videos as well. Take all that information, absorb it, and apply it to what you're doing so that you're not running into the problems that I had. It wasn't that bad, but you guys saw towards the end of the video, I started to get very, very frustrated with that drive shaft. And it was a big relief when I finally got it going. So definitely happy with the truck right now. We'll see what happens next. I'll probably blow the motor next week or break the transmission. You know how winters is. That's the life of the project. Things are gonna happen, but I'm looking forward to it. But we are all done here. I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's also on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Patreon. He also hits up for shirts, hats, hoodies, and all those other goodies at dirtnationoffroad at gmail.com. Thank you guys. Looking forward to hearing from you guys. Show us your swaps. Do everything like that. Tell us your horror stories because I definitely want to hear them. You guys saw the nightmare I dealt with. I want to hear about yours. Thank you guys. We'll see you again next time.